Hello everyone. Welcome to a new tutorial in this series of basic electrical and electronics engineering. And today we'll understand about the different types of materials and how they are classified. And we'll talk about semiconductors in a little bit of detail. So uh, the materials can be classified into three different categories based on their conductivity. So based on the conductivity, any material can be classified as either a conductor, an insulator or the semiconductor. So all the uh, electrical wires you might have seen in your uh, home appliances and plugs use conductor. So conductor is uh, where the flow <coughs> of current is easy at room temperature. It is allowing the flow of current through it. Whereas an insulator is one which does not allow the flow of current and semiconductor materials are the one which are intermediate. That means under certain conditions they allow the flow of current otherwise they do not allow the flow of current. So common type of materials which fall under the category of conductor is aluminium and copper etc. And for insulator the examples are wood or mica and for semiconductor the two most important and commonly used semiconductor materials are silicon and germanium. So as the, this classification is based on the conductivity of these materials, let us first understand what is conductivity. So conductivity of any material is the inverse of resistivity. So conductivity is the uh, capability of a material to conduct the flow of current across it whereas the resistivity is the opposition offered to the flow of current and this resistivity which is denoted by the symbol rho is the inherent property of any material. So the resistivity rho comes from the resistance R which is a very common passive network element used in any basic electrical circuit. So R of any material is given by rho into L upon A where rho is the resistivity of that particular material which is the inherent property as I just said and L is the length and A is the area of cross-section. So that means from this expression I can get the value of the resistivity rho which is equal to R into A upon L. So this becomes the expression for resistivity and as the conductivity is the conductivity by the way is given by or denoted by this symbol sigma and this being the inverse of resistivity rho gets the formula L upon R into A and let us find out the units of resistivity we can find out the units from its formula itself so the formula or sorry the units for resistance R is ohms and for area it is meter square upon for length it is meter so this goes off and the units comes out to be ohm meter so ohm meter is the unit which we used for resistivity and ohm inverse meter inverse becomes the unit for conductivity Now as I have just mentioned that it is the resistivity which is the inherent property of a material that is responsible 
for classifying any material into these three types and let us see what is the range or values common values of resistivities for these three different categories and because the conductor is a material which allows a free flow of current across it which implies that its resistivity would be low as compared to that of the insulator or the semiconductor so if i take for copper the resistivity of a conductor and specifically copper is 10 to the power minus 6 ohm centimeters this is for copper and similarly in case of insulator now insulator lies on the other end as that of the conductor because it is exactly opposite insulator is a material which does not support the flow of current across it the examples being wood and mica and the typical range of resistivity for case of an insulator and specifically I am talking about mica is as high as 10 to the power 12 ohm centimeter so you can imagine the difference of flow of current as we see the difference in the values of resistivities and for case of semiconductor uh, it lies in between uh, those of the insulator and conductor so a semiconductor is having a resistivity of 50 into 10 to the power 3 ohm centimeter this is specific value for silicon and it is equal to 50 ohm centimeter for germanium so you can now imagine the difference in the ranges of resistivities and <coughs> now uh, there is one more very important criteria to understand the current conductivity for these three different type of materials which is the energy band diagram Now the energy band diagram tells us the placement of two bands which are uh, directly related to the flow of current. Now these two bands are the conduction band and the valence band. Now I would uh, not go into the detail at the atomic level but uh, I'll just quickly uh, mention here that any material is basically made up of an atom and an atom has a nucleus which contains protons and neutrons. Proton is a positively charged uh, particle and neutron is negatively charged and in the outermost shells we have electrons which are continuously revolving and these electrons are responsible for the flow of current that we see in different circuits and these electrons are capable of contributing to the flow of current if and only if they are lying in the conduction band and the procedure or the uh, method to make these electrons move out from their valence band to the conduction band is by providing sufficient amount of energy and I'll explain this with the help of these bands so um, <coughs> let us see this is for uh, these three different types of materials that we just discussed Let us say this is the conduction band, CB stands for conduction band and VB stands for valence band. This I am drawing for an insulator and this is for a semiconductor and the third one is the energy band diagram for a conductor. Now as I've just mentioned that 
uh, in case of a conductor we need not to provide any energy but at room temperature and at standard temperature pressure conditions a conductor is capable of making the current flow through it the moment we apply the voltage supply so that means the valence band uh, and the conduction band now let us say this red hashed part is the valence band and the green hashed part is the conduction band similarly i'll draw for uh, all the three different types of materials so the green one is the conduction band similarly for insulator and the red one is the valence band now you can see here the gap between the two bands so this gap between the two bands is known as the energy gap i write it uh, with a capital e and a small g as the subscript so this is the energy gap and just try to compare the energy gaps of three different types of materials so as you see here in case of an insulator we've got a huge energy gap so valence band is quite far away from the conduction band and the free electrons are lying here in the valence band and it is practically not possible to supply so much of energy so that these electrons can jump to the conduction band and they be able to conduct so this is practically uh, not feasible in case of the insulators this energy gap being so large and when we look at the energy band diagram in case of a semiconductor we see that this energy gap is very less as compared to that of an insulator and in case of the conductor we can see that both the bands are actually overlapping so this is the conduction band <coughs> sorry this is the conduction band and here we have the valence band so you see the green and the red areas they are overlapping which clearly implies that the free electrons which are present in the conduction uh, in the valence band are also available for conduction at the same time and whereas in case of a semiconductor this energy gap being very less we we could easily fill up this energy gap and make the electrons to move from the valence band to the conduction band and they are ready for the conduction of current now if we look at the specific values of this uh, energy gap in case of insulator this energy gap is of the order of 6 uh, electron volts and 6 electron volts is quite a huge gap and if you can imagine One electron volt is one point six into ten to the power nine minus nineteen joules of energy. So into six times of energy has to be provided to uh, overcome this gap. And similarly, in case of a semiconductor, the energy gap for germanium is zero point seven five electron volt, and for silicon. it is 1.16 electron volt so this is for germanium and this is for <coughs> silicon so this uh, low energy gap can very easily be overcome and the electrons can uh, contribute the semiconductor material can be used for the flow of current and whereas in case of conductor the energy gap is uh, nil because the two bands are already overlap so this is how the three different types of materials can be classified and can be understood in terms of their energy band diagrams and i hope this quick tutorial on the classification of materials was of help in understanding the various concepts and in the next tutorial i'll see you soon and we'll uh, talk about in more detail about the semiconductor and 
the types of semiconductors that we have. Till then, keep visiting the channel and keep sharing. See you soon. Goodbye.